Today I'm here to peel back the curtain about the harsh reality of being a full-time YouTuber living in New York City. Now I'm not here to complain, I'm just here to let you know what you're getting yourself into if you want to pursue this path. The best way I'd describe maintaining any type of success as a creator in any medium is it's like running on a hamster wheel. You have to keep on producing, keep on producing, or you'll be irrelevant. You know what the biggest fear of any full-time YouTuber is? Taking a break. Losing that momentum because I've seen it youtuber takes a few months off comes back and wonders Where did the viewers go? I came from the traditional media world. I graduated with a degree in journalism I went down the well-worn path of trying to be a national broadcaster. I worked in the minor leagues I did high school games. I lived in Texas. I lived in Montana But there was a little something called a gatekeeper today in 2021 If you have a smartphone and an internet connection you automatically have a chance not just to go national But to be seen around the world the next generation isn't watching television and they're not going to movie theaters they're consuming content on their phones, on their iPads, on their computers. YouTubers are making six figures, millions of dollars. Find me one university in the United States teaching a class on how to be a YouTuber. I'll make more money this year from my YouTube channel than I made in nine years as a sports broadcaster in the traditional media world. This is the Wild West. The problem is the better your content gets, the higher the expectations. The more work you have to put into every single upload, you can't really settle. You always have to get better. Because if you don't, the YouTube algorithm is gonna recommend another channel to your audience who's doing better work than you. Talk about pressure. The truth is I'm relying on strangers off the internet to click on my videos and watch them long enough for YouTube to recommend it to others. My job is to keep you engaged. Simple as that. You see what I did there? Being a creator living in New York gives you immense advantages. There's a reason that countless movies and TV shows have been filmed here. It's a movie set. Your life automatically becomes more interesting when you move to New York City. Now you could create content like I do. The vast majority of creators living in New York aren't doing that. They're doing lifestyle content revolving around the day-to-day -day experience of living in the Big Apple. The content options are limitless. The big disadvantage, of course, is the cost of living. It's ridiculously expensive here and you need to be getting tons of views or brand deals to survive based on YouTube or TikTok numbers. Negative titles work. Clickbait works. Even this title leans a little bit on the negative and I'm not blaming YouTube creators for this. It's the audience. Go through any newspaper or any website and most of the headlines are going to be negative because negative always wins over positive. Worst subway stations videos are always gonna get more views than best subway station videos. There's a real pressure to conform as a YouTuber. You have to make content that large audiences are gonna be interested in. And this has been an issue for creators in any field. Creating what you really wanna create versus what'll get views, what'll get clicks, what will get sales. If a video falls in the forest and nobody ever watched it, did it really get published? Find any successful creator on YouTube and the odds are they create a very similar style and form of content. That's what the YouTube algorithm wants. That's what audiences want to put you into a narrow box and it can kill creativity because God forbid if you want to veer a little bit off topic, you're going to find out that most of your audience probably doesn't care. And it can be a poor financial decision as a full-time creator to move off topic. You can chase trending topics and get more views, or you can do what you really want or some type of combination of the two. If you want to be a full-time creator on YouTube or any medium, be prepared to fail over and over again. And just when you think you've got everything figured out, that's likely when you're gonna fail again. Netflix doesn't show their audience how many views a show got. And on television, they can usually only estimate that. But you can tell how your favorite creator's YouTube channel is doing just based on their views. They have nowhere to hide it. And that number on screen can lead to some unhealthy obsessions. I knew a creator who once changed the title and thumbnail of his video five times in the first hour. Oh wait, that was me. It's never enough. You get 10,000 views, you think you need 100,000 views. You get 100,000 views, you think 
you deserve a million. Let's not forget about the elephant in the room, TikTok, short form content, because the next generation, I think they're far more comfortable watching 10 one minute videos with that weird computerized voice than a good 12 to 13 minute mini documentary. Here's a fun fact. My wife Adriana can normally tell how my video performed on YouTube based on my mood that day. I let something that's out of my control affect my mood. There's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of facets of being a full-time creator that if you're not careful, can lead to anxiety and an unhealthy obsession with performance. The problem is the more views you get, the more subscribers you get, the more money you make, the more brand deals you have. I don't consider myself famous or a celebrity, but you might get to a point as a full-time creator where people begin to recognize you. Now, I always find this so awkward. There's a funny thing about the interaction. They walk up to you like they've met you before, like you've known them for a long time, and you've never seen this person before your entire life. One time Adriana and I were eating pizza and a girl came up to us trembling, wanting to say hi. And I thought to myself, why is this girl trembling over me? I'm just a guy sitting here eating pizza. I think the future celebrities in this country aren't necessarily gonna be television and movie actors. I think a lot of them are gonna be content creators because that's where future generations are heading to consume media. And because of that, it's gonna make this job look so much more glamorous than it actually is. Burnout is real at every level. This is the coolest job I've ever had and I don't wanna complain about it, but it can eat you alive. Obsessing over analytics, wanting to go viral so badly, always wondering what's going to be the next video idea. Because after you taste success, you don't ever want to go back where you came from. One of my favorite movies of all time is The Karate Kid. Not the Netflix spinoff, but the original. And one of the best scenes in that movie is when Daniel complains to Mr. Miyagi that he was making him do all this free labor around his house, thinking it was a waste of time. So, so you're supposed to teach and I'm supposed to learn, remember? For four days I've been busting my ass, I haven't learned a goddamn thing. Ah, uh, you learned plenty. And being a YouTuber is a lot like that because you can make videos for a year or two before you get noticed, before your channel really picks up. But in that time, you learned how to shoot video well. You've learned how to edit. You can negotiate brand deals. You know marketing. You've gotten a thick skin from all those crazy comments you've heard. You've basically turned into a full service production house without even realizing because it. I think the future is very bright for people that know how to shoot and edit videos and create value for large audiences. This is not a career path for somebody that wants stability. It's a career path for somebody that wants to keep grinding. If you don't know me, I'm John. I create videos about New York City and travel. So subscribe if you want to go on some really cool adventures and we're going back to our regularly scheduled content. I just wanted to vent a little bit and let you know what it's really like as a full-time YouTuber living in New York City. Guys, hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for your time, as always. Till next time.